Alright, hi everybody. It is another Monday and we're going to continue painting um, the dragonflies. So this one, I think it's number four, but practically it's number five for me. So um, two of them kind of got combined together. But anyway, so we're going to step in right away. Um, into the painting process and if you like this video don't forget to um, click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think I would love to see your work um, the first thing I did was um, sketch this and this one is cookie sheets so I did only half a dragon because if I flip it over, my other half is there. So when you have something symmetrical, you can just do one side and then you're gonna have perfect symmetry between both sides. And put that aside. And what I have already is one side I started. So when I'm waiting for this to dry, I can continue with parts of this um, side on the left hand side and right hand side so we're going to alternate back and forward and um, see what happens so I am for some reason not seeing um, my streaming going live so I let's see are we are we live already no idea so Yes, we are. Yay. All right. So I can see myself. Perfect. And that means you guys can see me because I don't want to be talking for half an hour to myself. Um, so I have one side started and the technique that I'm using is wet on wet. So you're going to see this beautiful. This is two steps on this side. So let's do the other side so you can see how that happens. And I'm using a round brush and it's a number six. You can use eight or 12 or four, um, but it really, the only thing it matters is we're gonna use pretty much the tip of the brush. So I'm going to make one part of that wing wet. And I'm really trying to stay in the pencil marks, which I transferred from the cookie sheet um, transfer that I sketched half of the dragonfly. So I'm starting with one wing at a time. And then I'm just going to use blue and you can use any color because dragonflies can come in any color. So you can do your own little thing. And I'm gonna start pretty pale. So I'm adding a little water to my area here. And I'm going to start with this area as soon as I put it in you see how the paint just bursts out and start mingling with the water but I'm gonna go around and extend this all around and every time I lift the brush this is what happens so it's really important for example whatever you brush lands or whatever you push lands you can have a small line and then when before you lift it you actually creating a little pool so i'm going to have to make sure i'm ending where i want it to end so do you see how i am concentrating more color on the ends because that's where my brush is ending so i can go from here to that side where i have more color or the opposite so that will work either way so next one will be for me to add a little more color so this is kind of like the first layer I still want to be in here when it's wet so I'm gonna drop this in and I'm going to continue again and follow those lines and not worry if my hand is not perfectly stable and has a little shake it's all good and I almost went against the bristles so that's uh, not necessarily the best thing and then I am going to get more color so now I'm, I'm adding from trans super transparent to a little bit less transparent but we're 
kind of 50% from where we started. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this without stopping this little ins and outs and all the innies will match the line that I have put on for the dragonfly. And then I'll clean my brush and any area that I feel like it's too much, I'm just gonna go in and push it away. Cause I don't want really a lot of white. It's going to happen anyway, that was very similar. So I'm gonna move to the bottom wing. I need this to dry a tiny bit before I add more. So the orange part is going to be on the top of both wings. One is a little bit longer. So I'm trying to stay inside the lines, but if I get out or don't make a straight line, I can always fix it. When it gets a little dry, I can put another line in there with my brush that will kind of even out things. Okay, so let's get a little bit more of the super transparent and you see what happens. So this is a, a wet area that touched another wet area with color. So pretty much that's what's gonna happen. And I don't want to be touching the canvas with my pinky. So I'm lifting my brush, but my hand is resting on the table. Get a little more color here and just drop in. A little more color. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Drop that color in. And then I'm going to pull some of the lines. Okay, so you can leave it alone and have these bursts of color go around, or you can touch them up if you don't like what you see. Sometimes it's better to leave it alone because when it dries, it's gonna create really beautiful things. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get it as close to this as possible. So this one is a little drier, so it's not completely dry. And I'm gonna go in here and I did my favorite side. So I'm going kind of against there, just adding a little more color on the edge and I don't want to rush it and then pull those lines in and since it's still a little bit wet those lines will not be perfect if I'm doing this on completely dry those lines will be much sharper but we have still wet wet canvas slightly wet it's not as wet as in the beginning and I'm gonna emphasize on a few of the lines and leave it alone so this and this is pretty pretty similar do we want it absolutely the same maybe but if you can do it it's not a big deal I'm going to just connect kind of a little bit those wings in the center so I'm creating a little bit of a shadow or dark area there's going to be spots with purplish red in here uh, which will give us a little um, center and a focal point in a way and then the rest is just around beautifully so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do the same thing with this dropping color and I'm gonna take that color all the way and since it's not dry like I said it's going to burst around and let's say there's an area where maybe I want to take a little bit off clean brush and I'm gonna drag the brush 
and take this out so I'm creating a line and I can do the same thing right here I'm gonna take my brush push it down it's clean and I'll drag it and then I created a little bit of a cleaner line so even if your lines um, escape from you you can still do things to your painting and even if it's a little drier like right here do you see how I can take away a lot of the paint now I did not want it to do so much but it's all good so I'll leave this side alone and we're gonna move to the other side and we're gonna go in with yellow and orange so the first thing I'm gonna start with is the lighter color and I'm just doing yellow whatever yellow you have because all the colors will be mixed with something so I'm going this is my dry side and the reason why I wanted to do this ahead of time um, is because if my yellows and blue start mixing you're going to get green um, is it fatal absolutely not I do have a little bit of green mix right here because my yellow is transparent so the transparency of the yellow and the blue underneath creates that greenish hue but right here I wanted to keep it really really clean so this is why I did this ahead of time um, but you guys wait until it dries your wings can dry and then you go in and do those areas and I'm just filling it in and the reason why is I'm gonna go next with a little bit of the orange and I am going to go in little smileys kind of just like this and I'm gonna do the bottom so pretty much what we're doing is kind of like wet on wet because I created a wet surface with the yellow so when I'm adding my orange it starts spreading around so now I do have to leave this alone until it dries so I can add a little bit of that red line and a little reddish details which are kind of purplish red so they're kind of dirty and I'm gonna go back to my blue and I'm still gonna work on the dry side so this needs to kind of cure dry whatever you want to call it and I'm gonna just get that blue and I will post in the description below all the materials that I'm using so you can find them easily that will be something helpful so I'm going to create and I'm doing kind of like J's following those lines and I'm gonna do the same thing here I have to be very careful when I'm getting close to that yellow like I said we don't want to pollute that yellow we want to keep it as clean as possible and I think I extended that wing a little bit but that's okay so I'm gonna go into the lines and just position you are the way it's more comfortable for you now what happens if my lines get squiggly the same I can do the same thing as what I did here with water let's say one of my lines is not good or I'm not happy with it and I will go in with clean brush and I will soften that line let it dry and then I'm gonna go back in and make it the way I want it so you're not completely stuck with your paint and since I touch this area I'm just going to kind of soften this and I'm gonna go in with the wet brush and I'll soften all the edges so instead of doing wet on wet I am doing dry on wet but then I'm softening those edges so do you see how cool this looks you still see those um, lines that I created those J's that I created but also everything around is very clouded um, so it's blending beautifully 
that is if you count the layers that's a lot of layers and every single time this is why I when I'm painting small I don't tape it to anything because I am turning my page around and this is a good uh, paper this is 300 grams so it's good paper it's not going to start warping around like the little bit lightweight paper which I'll show you on the end of the video what I did I ironed it so I'll show you how that turned out and again little J's and you can see how much sharper this is comparing this and how beautiful that looks and then I'm gonna go on the other side so I'm using so this is supposed to be paint that it comes in a tube and it's not liquid it's like paste and the blue that I'm using is the tallow blue with a little bit of green but um, when I use it it dries so pretty much it's almost like using blocks and I love this paint set it has beautiful colors so I'll share that with you guys and I think my yellow is pretty much dry so I'm gonna go in here and very fast I'm gonna just try to connect with with this side and you can see if you look at it close it's not perfect but clean brush I'm gonna start fogging now my area because I didn't do it right away I waited until that paint dried just slightly and then I'm gonna bring it even more in so now we have the lines we have a little bit kind of like more paint here cloud that paint and take it super transparent all the way back so I'm going to finish this one here and then I'm gonna move to the other side because this one is dry so there is my lines from here And you did see how I went a few times over without really putting a line on the paper. I do that a lot um, when I'm trying to make a straight line and I'm really not moving my wrist. I'm just moving my fingers back and forward. So I'm going to do a few lines over to position my paper the way it will make a straighter line, not the perfect but straight line and then I'm gonna lower my hand slightly down and barely touching the canvas I'll do my line and now I'm going to cloud this guys here a little bit just with a clean brush now yellow is dry so I'm gonna get a little bit of the red tiny bit of the blue so I'm making a, a dirty red and now I'm going to go in here, outline, and I'm not outlining it perfect like you see. And then I'm gonna start creating little lines. I'm gonna go back in here, get a little more, a little more of the blue. And I'm going to just create little dots and lines right in this area. So if you look at it, it adds enough is it what kind of detail is it it's dots it's no big deal and I think I'm looking at the wrong camera so hi guys you're there and I'm going to do the same thing right on this side and since I'm here I'm just gonna go very gently and touch areas where you need a little bit sharpening I am not going in beautifully outlining everything so I am just finding an area where it needs a little help and that's the area is going to get the help and everything else gonna stay the same like for example I have an area here that it's a little bit uh, any so I'm going to go right here and smooth that part and push everything together size a little bit on this part and also right here so I'm gonna 
clean my brush and see if I can lift some of some of the paint but almost like in dots and I'm gonna do the same thing here before I put the red sometimes when you start painting and you feel like doing something just do it and see what happens and let me know what happens <laughs> I'd love to know all right so red and I'm going to do the same a little bit of emphasizing on the end of those J's is it a little bit different than this one absolutely um, I would never try to make something absolutely the same so the legs also have that dirty red so again I ran a few times over the leg and then I planted my brush down there is the eye the eye let's get a little dirty blue and I'm going to make one side with blue and the reason why I'm getting a little bit dirtier blue which has red um, and I'll take some of that out of here because it got into the eye it's nice when I do something that it doesn't go perfect because then you can see how things are being fixed and I'm gonna turn it around and continue with my dirty blue so I'm gonna pull some blue here and my dirty blue is a little bit of a purple and of course I dirty my red so I'm gonna try to clean it and get that in here mixing your colors is one of those things that you're just gonna have to practice mixing colors just to see what happens because sometimes somebody tells you um, blue and red will make purple well there is a lot of different reds and there is a lot of different blues and yes they all will make some sort of a purple but um, until you experiment and play around with your colors you're not gonna be certain what purple you're gonna turn if you're playing with certain colors that you're not you have not played with and I'm adding a little more detail going back in and just need more weight on this side so you can already see how this is forming it's getting um, a little bit more um, different complicated comparing our previous one and let me see if it's here yes our guy is right here so this is what we did last time it was really just dropping the colors um, one or two layers and then we did the lines and now we are adding different color in the wings that are really separated so we're not letting them mix too much we adding more details and on the end I'm going to use paint that I'll show you how cool that is and if you don't have it how you can make your own okay so I'm going to go here completely dry now if you're not sure that it's dry don't rub your fingers like I just did but um, I can see that is not shining which means pretty dry so first layer is that yellow pale yellow and I'm just gonna run my brush over and try not to make it green and right there I touch the blue a little bit so all good taking the orange which is a cadmium and I'm gonna go in and my smileys are facing out so that's one thing that I have to look so I cannot make my smileys facing the same direction as the smileys on the other side so turn your butterfly turn your dragonfly the way it's more comfortable for your hand to create that element and just make it happen and pretty much is like little smileys when it gets small you can just turn them into kind of dots I'm gonna cover this area here and here 
Now when this dries, I am going to add some of that orange or I can start adding my iridescent color. So that's going to be kind of up to you, like what do you want to do with it? I'll show you what happens with what I do and then you do it your way and see what happens on your end and I would love to hear it and just share it with me. And let's fix those wings here. So we're going to go back to the J's and the J's are going in. So the J is small on the top and long on the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing, kind of J's. Too light on the collar. So I need to go and get more color, too light. So I'm going, there you go. Maybe now I'm too much, but we can always take away. I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna start. And remember your J's are matching the lines of the lines that we drew on the wings. And I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna do this part. And if it's not straight, it's okay. It's not a big deal. And you'll see how that's not going to, I think this is the one I did first, but it's still too wet. So I'm gonna do that one. And it's pretty hot where I am right now. So my paints are drying much faster. So if you are in an area where it's more humid, it might take a little longer, but don't rush your art. And I am getting very close, not necessarily absolutely the same, but that's okay. So I tested my brush to make sure it's not dripping because I'm dealing with a lot more um, wet paint here so it's clean but it's and I'm wiping it from time to time so you can still do that even if your paint is super wet so I took some of the paint out now a little bit wet a little bit water on the brush and I'll just go again and smooth this area so you see how here I have a little any and Audi that's gonna be fixed with my reddish purple. So this is very close. Now I'm going to get that continue with the body. So you see how I'm moving from one object to another. I need a little purplish dirty, dirty blue. And when you're painting or check and see what is your favorite shape. So I have a lot of J's, a lot of C's. So pretty much this is kind of like what's going on. I'm doing G little J's right now, again. And then I'm going to space little lines. There is little eyes. And I'm gonna do the pincher. I'm gonna emphasize a little more on the top again. So you can always go back and if something doesn't look quite right, you touch it up. Now I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm gonna go in and I'll just touch that water clean water or my clean brush on the area where there's nothing and barely touch the one side of the paint on my J's. Make sure that the smaller I get, the less water I have on my brush. And then I'm gonna just go over my lines and make it kind of blend it together. Go back to my blues. And this is why I started with dry on one side so you can see right away what happened. So I'm gonna start back in here with my blue and I'll bring it in. I can use this to smooth that area. touch up and fix things I'm gonna go in sometimes when I fix something and I really like what I see I'll go back to this side and I am going to emphasize that blue I really really like what how that looks so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna do that so even though 
we were looking at this guy do you see the difference how much bolder that is comparing this and you can do it either way now when we put the iridescent color it's going to mute everything a little bit and to put the iridescent color we do have to have a dry surface and i'm going to do this right here too so it's one more layer on the wings so the first one and you're gonna have to do this a little more oh goodness no big deal i'm going to smooth this first and then we're gonna take care of that little boo-boo there and you see how that happens so i have to make a couple of decisions either i am going to just slightly make that wing bigger um, or i'm going to take water and take that away so let's do one and then if it doesn't work we're going to do the other one i was thinking that i'm just going to go and make the wing slightly bigger but let's let's try first with clean brush and i'm starting away from the little boo boo area and i'm going to push it back towards the wing and I'm gonna push it towards the wing, clean my brush again, and start this again. And then, and here is the beautiful thing. I'm gonna get a napkin and wipe. Here's the beautiful thing. We have kind of a background and also a slight shadow, which means that if I take enough away from here, it will be okay. But also observing that I can go a little bigger. So now we have a wet area there. So if I go in here, I'm gonna start not just in the area, but I'm gonna start a little bit further away and I'm going to go in and just pull it into the wing. Wash my brush and to smooth that edge I'm gonna do the same thing right here with this guys which I didn't complete and that was it so was it a big deal absolutely not it wasn't the end of the world it was fine now my center is dry so I'm gonna go in with yellow and pretty much I'm gonna just drop a little drop on one side so going back in and just dropping one tiny little dot depending on the size of the area so obviously you have a little more right here on the head and then once this dries a little we're gonna go in with the red okay so this is still wet this needs to dry a little I can move into this side I'm gonna go orange but this time I'm really adding a lot of paint on my brush and you can actually see the color so since I'm using my paint is dried up um, there's not a lot of water on it but now I'm going to do this little lines here. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to drop my brush, push and pull and add this. So now you can see how this is being added. And then I'm going to go in here. So the less blue you have, the more yellow you're going to see. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add one, two, three, four and that's four and that's five and i'm gonna go in here i think this one needs to steal the blue so i'm gonna go back and this is how we're gonna go around touch different areas give one area a chance to dry um so never rush just take your time so i'm gonna go in here and just add emphasize in that area 
still want to take away. And you see, every time you paint something, even if it's the same, it might turn a little bit different and that is absolutely fine and actually it's cool. So I'm gonna go back with the red, kind of a dirty red, add this little smileys here on this side, dots on the end, a little more red, I'm gonna take some heavy red on and put dots, specks right here, same right on this side and on this side, so I can add this right now. Since I'm using the red, I'm just going to go around everywhere where I can touch, it's going to get a little color. So now this is time saving. Love to hear from you how your turn or what you did and how it's different and what experiments you did. So I'm gonna go kind of transparent, dirty red, and I'm going to start adding something here. You don't have to, but I am going to add a little bit. Almost, it's gonna look like it's very transparent, but it's going to give us a little more detail and a shadow. It's almost gonna make the wing more three-dimensional. So I'm using the tip of the brush, and that's why it's important to have a really nice brush. I'm gonna go on this side and add. So I'm not adding it on top of the blue line, I'm adding it on the bottom or next to it. You can do it on the top, it's still gonna be okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this areas here where we added that orange. It's a little purplish red. It's a dirty red. It's more red than purple. Now I can add a few little um, dots or lines just to create that illusion of the pattern on the wings and I'll try to do that super transparent so it's not standing out and that is very similar of what we did with this guy here but less and I'm going to do the same thing now make sure your C's <laughs> are facing the right way. So if this are facing that way, this will be facing this way. And always one side is more favorable than the other. And now I'm gonna add my yellow here, cadmium yellow, so it's gonna be the orangey. And I have one, two, three, four, five. And my fifth one is almost a dot. So when I'm planting my brush, I'm pretty much pushing down gently and pulling away. That's four and five. So even if you do four, if on first glance it seems fine, you don't have to touch it up again. Okay, I'm getting more red, dirtying it a little bit, and making those legs here. And we are 40 minutes into this. Comparing last live tutorial, which was very short, so now you know how you bumping in, bumping up the time with the difficulty of the painting, obviously. And I'm making sure I'm not going in front of the camera with my hat, because I just have to have a painting hat. There, let's add that red on the bottom, and red on the bottom here of the 
those guys a little more on this side because it almost disappeared so this here and again we're going to go in here one more time i'm trying to leave some of that yellow so i'm adding the red somewhere it's almost like an l shape so what do we do l c and a j and an i so that was pretty much my uh, brush stroke shapes let's do this a bit more perfect okay so i'm going to skip the background but i will add the shadow and i'm starting with the shadow now because i want my dragonfly to dry and what I'm doing is super transparent red and blue so there's more blue in this one than red so it looks kind of like a, a purplish grayish purple and that's the tallow blue and the red is I think it's just a normal um, it's a cadmium red okay so I'm going to start here, push my brush and get on the edge of the wing and just bring it in and this is it. Start first gently pushing, pushing more down with the brush and then when we get close to where we want to lift or we, we want the shadow to disappear, we'll pull it up ran out of color so instead of starting right here I have to start back from the beginning so I'm gonna start here push down and lift up if I have wet paint and it's the blue paint it's going to start mixing do we freak out about it maybe for a second but then it's gonna be okay um, okay so i'm going to do the other side and i can see how mixture mixing is happening here i can stop it right now by taking a napkin and just touching down that area that it's starting to mix and leaving it alone until it dries so let's do this side and i have to position this in a way that it's comfortable for my hand to start and finish Sometimes if you don't want to touch an area, you can take a brush and you can use that brush to prop your hand over your art or a ruler or some stick or something like that. So I'm going to start in here and push down more, like almost all the way, running out of color. Not a good thing when you're trying to do one continuous line. So I'm gonna have to start again and I'm seeing mixing here. So I'm gonna touch this down and you see I stopped it. So it wasn't a big deal. So I have to make sure that maybe I have to have tiny separation between the wing and the shadow. So I'm going to, using a pinky, I'm going to blend this down and push almost all the way. The whole brush is down and then lift, lift up. And it's giving me a very pale shadow, perfect. You can make it a, a little bit extra. So the background will pretty much determine how much shadow you're going to need. I'm doing it super pale. I'm gonna leave this white for now. And now I'm going to do this side. So I moved it, so even if I'm smudging something here, it's not a big deal. So starting first with the tip of the brush, pushing down almost like a quarter of an inch in it, going around and lifting away. Now, if your art is dry, you're going to have easier time on this part because you can overlap, you can move into your art because that color is so transparent, it's not going to change anything. Um, so that is one thing that will be helpful. Now, my shadow is kind of on the bottom side of the wings. 
So I am just very gently, I'm gonna create a shadow on one side and I'm doing my C's again and then almost like a line on the bottom, which means my shadow on the tail is on that side, which was the left side. And I'm gonna do the same thing here on the head and the eyes, pincher and other pincher. Same with the legs. I'm gonna separate it away from the legs because the legs are standing a little bit further away from the surface they have landed. And that's kind of an interesting thing for dragonflies is they don't use their legs for walking, which is very interesting. All right, so checking my area, it looks dry. So we're gonna move to the next paint. I'm using iridescent color. This is something that my friend brought back from Japan and I love this paint a lot. And I have used it just to paint with it or as a accent. So we're going to do this as a accent right now. And I'm going to get that super iridescent cool paint and I'm going to do very elongated J's starting from the top and pretty much using a very tiny J on the on the beginning and very long handle on the J so and you can use the whole brush and you guys probably are not going to be able to see this but if you're giving this to somebody they going to see that really beautiful iridescent um, paint sparkly little things so if you love sparkles and if you love shiny things that is really cool so i'm going to wash my brush make sure there's nothing on it i'm gonna go to the pink and make sure it's not too much water I'm going to add some of those smileys back in here or dots so I'm just adding a little bit of sparkles in here now if you don't want to buy this paint you can buy this iridescent medium um, I'm gonna try to get the link for you guys you can mix this with your paints and make this um, your paints pretty much iridescent um, I tried it it's a little bit different but it still works. It still gives you a really cool effect. I'm going to put a few dots right here. Lines, some of the red lines, which this is a pink. I could have used the red, but why would I use the red? I'm going to go to the white. Make sure my brush is clean so we don't pollute that color. It's a very interesting texture. And what I'm gonna do with the white is, I'm just gonna drop a little kind of dots. Not everywhere, I don't wanna overdo it because if I overdo it, it's, not, it's gonna take away from this beautiful color. So I'm gonna add those on the top. It's almost with the really pale color you cannot see it but you can see how that looks really cool let's add one more dot here and here and i'm gonna try to do similar on this side now i'm gonna go on the center and i'm gonna add a few of those on top so do you see how we toned this down we made it darker then we made it lighter I'm gonna put that on the eyes too and the pinchers, a little bit on the body. So this is more transparent on a, the, the light colors. So it's almost like it takes the color that it's lighter and makes it shinier, but on the darker colors, it leaves um, the color in. And I think I'm gonna do the yellow, but let's find out if that's gonna work. Just want it right on the top, not covering the whole previous color, but just a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and that's it i think i think we can do this we can finish this just like that i think it's gonna be okay so i hope you enjoyed this and from this we did it this way so it's a little bit different but pretty much the same we added a few extra details comparing last time i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did let me know what do you think what do you want me to paint and i will see you next monday at 1 p.m pacific standard time and don't forget to push that notification bell and subscribe to my channel i will see you soon